My name is Katie Wyatt, and I am a member of a movement. We're a movement of thousands of people across the world who are protesting. We're protesting for the protection of the right for all people, no matter their social or economic circumstances, to know beauty, to wonder, to be captivated, to be able to draw from a wellspring of joy inside of them. I'm a member of a movement. And this movement is called El Sistema, The System. I wanted to start today with music, which is the way that I was introduced to every El Sistema classroom in Venezuela when we walked into them. I first experienced El Sistema in 2005. It's me in a uh, neighborhood in Caracas as a violist under the baton of Gustavo Dudamel, who is the most famous graduate of the El Sistema Youth Orchestras of Venezuela. He's now the music director of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. He was a Time Magazine Person of the Year. Crazy hair, great attitude. Um, you probably have seen him. I was part of a touring festival called the Youth Orchestra of the Americas, which was a group of young people that were brought together to travel to North and South America, to travel to South America. We were from both North and South America, and we were brought together really to learn from one another, to practice together, to party a little bit. I don't know how that got in there. That's where I learned how to salsa. And of course, to leave uh, our experience in South America and Latin America with different ideas. I came away with different ideas about the guerrilla warfares of Colombia. While in, on tour in Venezuela, I learned about the disappeared in Argentina for the first time. In the orchestra, I learned that my friends from Latin America were taught that instead of there being seven continents on the globe, that there are only six. In Latin America, you don't learn that there is North and South America. It is just America. When we arrived in Venezuela, there was another audition. I had gotten into the orchestra, and we get there, and they say, OK, great. Thank you so much for coming. Everyone played beautifully. You now have to audition again for your seats in the orchestra. So I did my audition. I played pretty well. At the time, I was 25. I had uh, just graduated from the Cleveland Institute of Music with my master's. I had been performing with the New World Symphony in Miami. I had taken the audition for the Detroit Symphony and other top 10 orchestras in the country. I was doing pretty well, 25. When I went to the board the next day, just like in high school, just like here, where you go to see where your name is and where all the seats are, there was a Venezuelan in every principal chair. These Venezuelans were between 17 and 19 years old, still in high school. And I thought, OK, I get it. I started taking private lessons when I was 10. Grew up in the military, had a pretty uh, middle America average life. Uh, 
these kids must have started private lessons when they were three years old. This must be all the oil money in Venezuela that I had heard so much about. But no, these kids instead had been part of a movement of orchestras and high-level training called El Sistema. These kids had grown up in poverty, and El Sistema is what brought them to this moment to beat out the 25-year-old white girl from Washington, D.C. In case you haven't heard of El Sistema, or you feel like maybe you know a little bit about it, but aren't quite sure exactly what it is, El Sistema is the international movement of music for social change that started in the 1970s in a parking garage in Caracas, Venezuela. It was founded by Maestro Jose Antonio Abreu, who was an economist, pianist, composer, and conductor. As Minister of Culture for a time, he was asked to address the problem of poverty in his country. Instead of creating a jobs program or a welfare program, Maestro Abreu went to a cement parking garage in the middle of Caracas Barrios. He put out 100 chairs, 50 music stands, and an instrument on every chair. The first day, 12 kids showed up. The next day, 20 kids came. From that, that orchestra grew to hundreds across the city, to thousands across the country, to now two million children enrolled in youth orchestras all over the world. And so back to the summer of 2005 in Venezuela, where after a month and a half of touring together as an orchestra, we gave our final performance in Rosario, Argentina, a very small town in the northern part of Argentina. From my chair in the viola section, as the music pulsed around me, I looked out on a sea of entirely brown faces. This was the first time that I, in a symphonic orchestra, had looked out into an audience that wasn't completely white. And for, to be honest, usually most of the orchestra is white also. This was a moment where I realized, these are my people. These people love what I love. They love classical music. They get me. Through making music, the hundreds of us on stage and the hundreds of people in the audience were building something that we had in common. Through our active performing, through unspoken communication, we were building a playing field for empathy. Without saying a word, by making music, you and I have to create something together and work hard at it to create something that is bigger than ourselves. Maestro Breyu said that the orchestra is the only community where the essential and exclusive feature is to come together with the fundamental objective of agreeing with itself. And to agree on what? on beauty. I returned to Venezuela in 2005, sorry, in the spring of 2010 as part of a five-year project established by Maestro Abreu when he won the TED Prize in 2009. My job as an Abreu Fellow was to research the fundamentals of El Sistema and bring them back here to Durham, North Carolina, where I would start an El Sistema program. I had so many questions about how to begin my model. How many kids? What instruments should they play? How much money is this going to cost? How are we going to build this thing in Durham? To this, most Venezuelans would just pat me and say, tranquilo, flaca, chill out, skinny lady. <laughs> no one in Venezuela would tell me that this was the way, that this is how you need to start an El Sistema program around the world. Instead, they said the best advice that they could give me and what was the most important takeaway that I could have is that I must begin immediately, like on Skype, while I was still in Venezuela. At that moment, I realized the essence of the motto of El Sistema, which is tocar y luchar, to play and to strive. Sometimes it's not about beginning with the end in mind. Sometimes the most important part is just beginning. Upon my return from Durham, uh, upon my return from Venezuela, I founded a nonprofit here in Durham called Kids Notes. Prior to Kids Notes, children from East Durham were considered problems to solve. I went to a lot of nonprofit meetings where it was about the blight of uh, education in East Durham and that these students were victims of poverty. Ten years later, these students in Kids Notes, same kids, are looked to as leaders in the classroom and the bright young youth of Durham. Tocar y luchar. When I returned from Venezuela, I called my teacher at the time, Bob Vernon, to let him know about my decision to leave playing the viola and go into building El Sistema-inspired programs. 
Mr. Vernon is the principal violist of the Cleveland Orchestra, undoubtedly one of the best orchestras in the world. This is after I told my parents about my change in career. And while they were pretty supportive, there was always a nagging question for me, which was why on earth did they pay for all those lessons? Mr. Vernon picked up, and before I could even get through what I wanted to tell to him, I was in tears. I felt like I must be such a huge disappointment to him, having worked my tail off, remember, from third grade all the way through graduate school playing viola, to then go to Venezuela for a summer, gallivant about, and come back and change everything and say that I want to go into community organizing and change making through music. After listening to me cry, as all great teachers do, he said, Katie, this is the moment we have been preparing for. This is exactly it. All of your focus, hard work, dedication, sacrifices have led you to this moment. You have been practicing for exactly this. Seize the moment. You're ready. Tocar y luchar. Practicing for exactly this. I never realized that practicing the viola could prepare me towards a career in mastery to becoming the president and CEO of El Sistema USA. The discipline to go back to it every day, to listen to myself and to my teachers with humility, to apply learning, make changes, and then get right back out there to be your own personal feedback loop. I live every day with Tokari Luchar to play and to strive. What I love most about this call to action is its connection to practice, to showing up every day, to going for it every day, to always, always go for broke, to go farther than expected. It is in the Luchar to strive. Thank you very much.